Hello? Welcome again. I am going to teach you how to make an easy five ingredient steak. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word ingredient, but I digress. Why is the blood coming out of this? I thought it was sealed. Willed. Oh. Hold on. I think it's okay. Anyways, alright, so it's Omaha Steaks. My dad gets it for me every year for Christmas. However, coming this April, my subscription to Riverbend Steaks will begin and let me tell you, read it and there we go. It's called Never Ever Something. They never use antibiotics. They never use for problems. All that crazy stuff that they put in all our meat nowadays. They don't do it. So, try to be healthy. Doesn't always work. But I do try. Alright, so. What we're going to do with this is we're going to sear it and then roast it. Uh, so what I do is I do a reverse sear sometimes, like for my lamb chops. And I'm going to get, this is basically the same ingredients as you would use for lamb chops. So what I do with this is I'll slather it in a little bit of olive oil. Athena olive oil is the best. You must try it. It's a little pricey, but not as expensive as super expensive olive oil. So we'll just give it a nice coat. There we go. Perfect. Duh, put this away. All right. And I'm gonna have one clean hand, one dirty hand. All right. dry my hands. All right, so dirty hand, clean hand. It's the fastest way to season and start cooking your meat. In the meantime, that's almost room temperature. All right, we'll put this on medium. Yeah, medium exactly. All right, let that start heating up. First thing you want to do is salt and pepper. So the five ingredients are olive oil, salt, pepper. Oh, I'm sorry. Six ingredients. Connection. My bad. Lemon pepper. So let's do this again. Salt, pepper, lemon pepper, mint, garlic, olive oil six ingredients then you have the steak which makes it seven which is the number of completion am i correct all right so the oven's ready to go the steak is not so what we will do with the steak after we salt pepper and lemon pepper it is we're going to sear it for about a minute or two on each side maybe a little more just you know give it a good sear okay so lemon pepper I know I use my dirty hand to grab this, but I use it like this. There's no, I use my very last phalanges to touch the steak. All right, so you wanna do it the flavor. If you love lemon pepper like I do, slather it on. If you love garlic, but garlic pepper, the garlic pepper, uh, lemon pepper, you know, you tolerate a little bit, put a little bit, or you don't even have to put any, but I like it. And it pairs very well with mint. I don't know if you ever had a mint lemonade. Very good. So we go. Got some mint. And you're not going to throw this juice away. You're actually going to pour it on there before you pop it in the oven. All right. So there you have it. Oh, it smells so good. There we go. Pop it on there, and before you pop it in the oven, which you could do right on the pan, just 
kind of pour this over it. Okay, see here. So I need very easy. Mint, garlic powder, lemon pepper, black pepper, salt, olive oil. And if you want, you can throw a little butter on it. Once you flip it and you're almost ready to take it out and put it in the oven, you can throw a little bit. But this particular cut, it's a top, it's a top sirloin. I don't, eh, it is pretty lean. I guess you could put a little butter on it, but I kind of like the, the taste of the olive oil. That's just me. All right, so. have that. So I heard through the grapevine that Alec Baldwin is being arrested. All right, so because it's meat on this counter, instead of using tough and tender, which tough and tender is excellent, but this is very specific to killing any kind of bacteria. So meat in particular, I don't mess with at all. So I'm gonna clean that. All I did was use this to dry my hands. My hands are clean. There we have it. Nice clean counter. I do not, as you know by now, I hate filth. So, I make a terrible roommate because I think I would drive my other new roommates crazy because of how close to heat I am. Alright, so, on that side, I'm going to say that was about two to three minutes. I like it a little bit blackened. Oh, look at that. Love it. As a matter of fact, we can probably turn off the heat to the other side. And because I did burn it a little bit, but that's how I like my steak. I do like it burnt on the edges. You cook it to how you like it. I throw a little bit of butter on top. Kind of like a salad. All right. Doesn't matter that. Now do this. Oh, that flavor. Right. Pick it up real quick and let it sit on top of it. There you have it. All right. So, now what you do, after you seared it and you trapped in the juices, right, you're going to pop it in the oven. I do 250 degrees Fahrenheit. For those that are uh, on the metric system, let me clarify, this is Fahrenheit. 250, and I put it in for about 20 minutes. You can put it in, I want to say, as long as you want or how well you want it because 250 degrees is not necessarily going to burn it, it's just going to soften it. It's almost like cooking a pot roast. The longer you cook it, the softer it gets. So in this particular situation, uh, I'm going to do about 20 minutes, because I like mine a little bit, not red, I like mine like medium, medium low. So I do 15. And if you like it rare, rare, you probably don't even have to put it in the oven, but I like to do that because the oven gives it like a different flavor, in my opinion. So yes. Yeah, so the Solugar does have a scent to it, but it's neutral. It's not, 
It's not invasive. As a matter of fact, you smell it for one second and then you don't smell it anymore. It's only you smell it during the act and then when you're done, it goes away. So here you have it, or there you have it. I gotta get more paper towels. They're in my closet and I'm too lazy to go get it. So there you go. Yeah, so Alec Baldwin is finally being actually charged for uh, killing, I wish I could remember her name. I can't remember her name. You killed her on set during the movie Rust, right? And she was one of the actresses that was going to out the pedophile ring. Gee, I wonder how that gun just happened to shoot itself at the very person who's gonna out Hollywood, right? Hmm. Coincidence. How many coincidences before it's mathematically impossible? The more you know. Okay, so that's in the oven. As a side, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna make a scented pink. Here we go. Ooh, pear gorgonzola. I think it'll pair nicely with these. All right, let me get my salad bowl out, which is basically a Pyrex with a lid that I'm gonna take the lid off. Hmm? Yeah, I'm trying to be healthy, guys. Trying. I lost four pounds so far the last two weeks. At least I'm going down, not up, like I've been doing. So after the holidays, you know, I'm a hundred and should I really give you guys my weight? I mean really. It's like 174 before I started gaining weight again. But my worst weight I've ever been was 235. That was the I was, oh, I hated myself. I was a slob. I couldn't even sleep at night because I would cave in on myself. That's how bad it was. Never liked clothes shopping. Didn't even like going out, to be honest, except to go eat. I was disgusting. But I said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of looking at this thing, looking back at me in the mirror. Let me tell you something. I'm one of the hardest people on me compared to anyone in the world. That's including both of my parents. I'm very hard on myself. So if I'm cursing myself out, don't take it too, too, uh, you know. But yeah, I was discussing. And for those of you that are overweight out there, don't take me personally. I'm just hard on myself. Some people could carry weight well. It does not carry well with me. I got very sick from it, actually. I ended up in the hospital because I lost my vision. Dizzy, severe headaches all the time. And what happened was some women, when they gain weight, mostly women, is they can end up with pseudotumor cerebri, which is increased pressure, uh, cerebral spinal pressure in your brain and spinal cord, that, which is what explains the pain I was in. And it could also affect your vision. Usually it's the one eye. I had the one eye. They thought I had MS, but it wasn't MS. So blurred vision in the one eye. It has a lot of MS symptoms. So, all the doctors like, you gotta lose weight. I'm like, is this what you guys always resort to? Like, give me a real diagnosis. Well, yeah, it's because I was fat. So, when people wanna be fat and fabulous, it could kill you, literally. In many, in more ways than one, in very painful ways. It was very painful, what I went through. I had two concussions in my life. That headache felt like a concussion. That's how bad it was. And it went down my back and around my shoulders. And sometimes the pain would go around the ribs because of the pressure on the spinal cord. And I felt like I was being constricted because every time I took a breath, it was like I was being stung by bees. Very painful. So I go to the hospital, my stubborn ass, excuse my language, drove myself 
to the hospital with one functional eye, severe headache and everything else because I didn't have the money for an ambulance. So, took myself. And uh, I was in the hospital for a week. Almost died the second night there. I don't know what they gave me, but my blood pressure was 60 over 45. It was pretty bad. I was going into, um, I don't think it was hypovolemic shock. What was it? It was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I felt great. Probably because I was ascending to the heavens. Meanwhile, I see seven or eight nurses and doctors around me trying to save my life and I'm just smiling at them <laughs> and um it's like we gotta get another IV come on come on I must be hypovolemic shock because they they had two IVs well they had one IV in me already they pressurized that to pump fluid in, and then they were trying to get it in this arm but all my veins collapsed so I lift up my foot I'm like trying to my foot so I was like super nonchalant about it and the, and the one lady was getting ready to stick my foot when they finally got a being here yeah it was interesting it was fun yeah it was like a faint that you don't come out of that's what it felt like that's what death kind of felt like it's like oh i'm about to faint but i feel like waking up anyways i die chris Pseudotumor cerebri. They went down the entire list to try to figure out what was wrong with me. They kept saying papilledema, MS, yada, yada, yada. Gave me all these tests. $6,000 later, it was none of that. I go to another hospital that specializes in neurology, and they said, oh, it's pseudotumor cerebri. Here, take this. They're like, and uh, lose some weight. So that's what I did. I lost 67 pounds. Felt great, pain went away. My vision still not the greatest, but yeah. I mean, as far as reading goes, but distance, I can see like an eagle. Cacao. Yeah. So that's my story. Find a man named Brady. So yeah. Uh, how long have I been here? Let's look at the time. Of course, it's right in the middle. Yeah. You know what? How about I look like a woman? Just a little. I mean, I have, I have mascara on. But getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day, I don't have time to put makeup on. Too tired. I'm like a bicycle. See what I did there? Bicycles, too tired. I am. Let's see what else. You know what's funny? So I'm talking about different things, and all of a sudden I'm on Rumble and I'm following these different guys that I follow, like Patriot Street Fighter, and, you know, I, I gave you pretty much those. Oh, Red Pill 78 is another good one. Red Pill, one word, 78, all one word, Rumble, he's great. He's very good. I watched, um, he does the Occam's Razor series, and then he also does bits in the news, like, uh, I forget, oh goodness, I forgot what he was talking about yesterday. Well, as far as what's going on today in government, things seem to be looking up on our behalf. Kevin McCarthy got rid of the 87,000 armed IRS agents. He's like, nope, we're not doing that. All right. On top of how overstanding on everybody that is over taxes and you know you make a purchase of six hundred dollars you have to answer to that between that arming them 
and then trying to disarm the citizens at the same time because they don't or they're not disarming us they're just making it hard to harder to arm us but they're arming their own people put all that aside all that you know anybody can have an answer for that but how much does it cost to pay 87,000 IRS agents how much does it cost us the American people to pay for these guys to scrutinize us and tell us what to do with our money. We're paying for that. It's almost like Country Owners Association, right? Nations Owners Association. Like, yeah, you're gonna pay us all this money so we can tell you what to do. So you have that. Uh, there was three things now. I'm not a fan of McCarthy. That's my personal opinion. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm like, I don't want to say anything bad about her. I don't know her enough to say anything good or bad. There's just something off, and I don't quite trust her. And technically, we're not supposed to trust anyone in, in government. You know, somebody chewed me out for, for speaking against DeSantis. I didn't speak out against him, but somebody who was just a stone-cold follower of his said, what the hell are you talking about? This, that, and the third. I said, you can't look at the purse, you have to follow the pen. That has more meanings than one, according to Q. What I said was, it's funny that he's doing a COVID investigation on people, government-wise, Yet, he signed into legislation that if there were another pandemic, that he would enforce a lockdown and vaccine if necessary. He signed it. So when you, you could do all the good things in the world, you could be the one state that stayed on lock, this, that, the third, and win the hearts and minds of everybody gets reelected. Okay, this is before his reelection. And then turn around and sign something like that that's completely opposite of what you portrayed on the outside that's where I have a problem that's where every American citizen should be like hey wait a minute what is this explain this right but no one does that because they're like oh he's such a good guy he's a great guy he's a nice he's a good politician we all liked Dan Crenshaw at one point in the beginning we thought he was an American hero look at him he's one of the biggest assholes that's trying to run this country, calling his own people criminals. He's not one of us anymore. And he's part of the World Economic Forum. Who wants to kill humanity, by the way? Or most of it, like two thirds of humanity, they want to get rid of and enslave the rest. Explain that to me. Explain it. At least do that, but no. You know, this person's a, a fellow conservative, but they're coming after me, another conservative, for questioning or commenting on a beloved politician. Now, I would say the same thing about Trump, and as a matter of fact, I did. Back in 2020, somebody was... Actually, this person was a never-Trumper, believe it or not, I believe. I think it was a never-Trumper. Talking about, or was it, gun control, something like that. And I said, listen, I trust no one. I don't even trust Trump. And I used to follow Katie's Unsafe Space. I followed her on, on Facebook. And she was the first person that I saw that outed Dan Crenshaw regarding guns, uh, you know, the Second Amendment rights, this, that, and the third. I said that a lot just to, you know, because I know you know what I'm talking about. She was the first one, because I, at, up to 2020, I used to love Dan Crenshaw. Loved him. I thought he was like, you know, the warrior for our nation. He was not. You know what that eye patch is? It's not an eye injury. It's for the, the government to, you know. Now 
not to be graphic, but that is how bad of a man he is. I said that. Not a good guy. Now, I'm not saying that that's DeSantis. Everybody's different in their own way. It's just the big thing is whose side are you on? That's what I want to know. You know, the liberals in office, Patriot Street Fighter quoted, uh, I forget her name, but she says, the scariest people are not the conservatives, or no, no, I'm sorry, are not the liberals, because they will tell you what they want and what they intend on doing most of the time. It's conservatives you got to watch out for because they will tell you everything that you want to hear and do the opposite behind closed doors. This is why I do not trust anybody in office. I think that's a wise thing to do. I don't think we were ever meant to trust the government. Any good leader will tell you that. Don't trust us. Scrutinize. And it's... I will say it again, like I said in my last video. You have the right to ask questions. To anybody. In my case, sometimes anything. Like, what are you doing here? Just put you away. Anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. It's maybe the way you disseminate the question to the person could you know, alter the results or your answer that you're going to get. I'll give you an example. Someone tells you, we're going to eat now. Oh my God, do we really have to eat right this minute? Okay, you don't ask a question like that. You would say, oh, you know what, I'm kind of full. Do we really have to eat right now? Is it, is it, you know, you don't have to be wishy-washy, but be like, I'm really not feeling hungry. Is it okay if I wait for later or you know do we really have to eat at this moment is there something going on afterwards that's okay my parents would let me question them on anything well mostly my dad my mom she was a because I said so kind of person you you would think that would be a dad thing sometimes my dad would say it if he was really busy didn't have time for the nonsense and my question was just stupid at that time or just doesn't have any weight on the situation Kind of like that last person in a meeting that holds you there longer because they asked that one question that holds everybody and it was a stupid one. There's memes about stuff like that and it happens, trust me. Okay. I'm going to say it's about 20 minutes. Let's see how it looks. See all those oven mitts? Yeah, I use a towel. And I yell at an enemy audience, okay? My co-workers laugh at me because I'll grab my machine because, you know, some things have a mind of their own. Oh, that's perfect. See? Medium well. Medium well. And there's really not a lot of blood on this, so I can't eat blood. But there's juices. I'll eat the juice. That's a perfect little six ounce steak. Good portion. Oh, I'm gonna make my fruit punch, which is absolutely D E delicious. I have my own little language. So, the thing with steak is I probably shouldn't cut into it as fast as I did, but what you wanna do is you wanna let it sit. It depends on the cut, but Gordon Ramsay, who's like a really good chef, will tell you to let it sit for seven minutes. I like the number seven, so number of fish. There you go. Put it off. There you go. Let that sit. In the meantime, I'm gonna make some splash H2O. I think I told you guys about it my last video. Find it. Ah, there it is. Hiding in plain sight. Okay. This one packet will make a half a gallon. 
Great. All right, so I guess I'm making steak, a pre-made salad that I made, and <laughs> honestly, it's gonna taste really, oh, I have this ice still. Why is it so much heat? Now, it's not freezing up here, but I do have the heat on because I'm freezing, and instead of letting this keep going, I just uh, open this up and let the residual heat up. So that my house stays warm. I'm gonna use my zero water. And no, I'm not monetizing. I don't get paid for this. I just like it a lot and tell you about it. That would be kind of cool though. Like zero water, like, hey, I heard you said publicly that you like our products. Here's some free filters. That'd be great. Appreciate that. Honestly, I think I paid 34 bucks for this, two filters. That, because I'm one, uh, I'm one or two people in this house at all times, lasted us a year. And yes, you do get that little tester thing that will tell you that the water is zero and it does work. Wanna see? I'll show you. Just for poops and giggles. All right, so it's this thing. I did have to change the battery on it. Oh, we can test it. This is Poland Spring. Tap water, New Jersey tap water, and then zero water. We want to check it out. First, let's do, we'll start from zero. How's that? Now they say that once it goes to six, like if you see a six, you should change the filter. But I've had this for since 2020, the end of 2020. All right, so on. I don't know if you see it or not. So I'm gonna put it in there and you hit the hold button. And look at that. Boy, did you look at that. Zero, okay? It says zero. Still at zero. That's a very good filter. I'm telling you, Brita is disgusting. Can actually taste it. It's gross. It's in my opinion. Never tried any other filter. I just like the zero water. All right, so here's Poland Springs. Ooh, 43, 42. Look at that. You're better off drinking zero water. Still not as bad as tap water. Tap water is 144. That's in New Jersey. New Jersey's in the red, by the way, for as far as water quality goes. Maybe besides Flint, Michigan. If you don't know about Flint, Michigan, look it up. Their water had, their water was severely contaminated. Severely. And I wonder if it's around the time when Q first said watch the water. I'm curious. Now watch the water has multiple, multiple meanings. As a matter of fact, you'll learn a lot about the watch the water meaning if you watch the Alpha Warrior show, uh, when he, I think it's, he has like a couple little series. So like you'll see like one video box exposing Hollywood, another video box will say, uh, you know, the Hillary scandal, whatever. And then he'll have like part one, part two, part three. This one is, I think it says exposing Soros, Hillary, and such and such and such. And it'll be part one, part two, part three. And Alpha Warrior, who is a former Marine, Marine and cop, along with a sheriff from another state who does a, he does very good investigations. And they say, well, you know, you hear the term, watch the water. Did you know that in simple waterways, like say Mississippi or like a creek that, that branches off the Mississippi River, leads to all these bunkers that are holding nefarious whether it's a data lab a you know a hideout a bug out whatever they have and it's owned by people like soros and it's really interesting and the people who do try to investigate it it 
partially chased away. Now, if you, you can investigate anything, and people will say, oh, well, okay, well, if you want to waste your time and then have fun, but no, they partially discourage that kind of investigating. So I'm probably going to have to, this, it is kind of like a Brita. You have to fill this like two or three times to get it to the top. But yeah, what I like to do, sounds stupid, but toss this and fill it with some zero water and then take that. They're on to me. Did I say too much? What is that? That's weird. It's like a it's like an electronic whistling. Let's see if it's outside. That was weird. Never heard that before. Oh, it's the filter. Wow, my hearing was really good. Can you hear it? It's like alien whistles. I don't know. Alright, so I'm gonna say it's safe to say it's been about seven minutes. Pour my glass of punch splash I keep calling it splash 2o that would make sense it's the same h2o you see splash 2 but it's like splash h2o okay but nonetheless it is delicious and what I also like to do with my zero water let me show you something let me show you something. Okay. Now, I told you I switched the Melaleuca, right? Let's see if I get the right one. I'll just give you an example. Here we go. All right. So this is Clear Power 12X, right? I, by accident, put tap water in it when... And here's the concentrate. Okay. So when you go to the grocery store or Walmart, whatever big box retail you decide to go to, you buy this one thing of Windex, right? The Windex could cost you, depending on where you live, New Jersey, unless you shop smart or find a sale somewhere, you could spend about six bucks on a Windex. This is about the same price. You're probably like, oh my God, it's so expensive. Or I live in New Jersey, it's not that expensive. I've, I've seen it. But I think on average, it's about three to four bucks, right? Let's just stick to the average. So you pay four bucks for this, but it's one bottle, 90% water, the rest chemicals. Melaleuca, it's 6.88, I think. But you can refill it 12 times, 12. So that aside, instead of using tap water, I use zero water, some kind of filtered water, so that there's no oil, debris, or whatever that's coming out of your tap onto your glass and other cleaning agents, right? And uh, I don't know how to get my shower head off its thing. It's like, it's like caked on there. But I really wanted, I have a zero water shower head that came with this when I first bought it a couple years ago. And I wish to God I could get that thing on because I get so itchy when I get out of the shower. It's it's scary. Even with, well, I'm using the Melaleuca products, it helps a little bit. But the big thing is the water. You know, you need clean water to, to wash yourself. This, this water is 144 on the number thing. I don't know what all that means. I think there's a little booklet that tells you. Like, you know, it's count, like lead, they find, like... I don't know what the number means. Like, if it levels or 
actual thing that they're finding in it. But I have a little booklet somewhere. I just don't remember where it is. This is my WTF drawer, by the way. This is where my mess exists. So I filled this twice, that should be enough. I think we had a better, I felt like my conversation making the, uh, what was it? What did I make for you guys the other night? Oh yeah, the uh, the green beans. I, I felt like that was kind of like, eh. I'm like, I gotta come up with more interesting information. Mm, it's delicious, don't do that at home. Oh my gosh, I could taste the mint. Oh, yum. Okay, so that's that for seven minutes. There you go, a little bit of the oil. And yeah, there you go. And that little bit of blood there, won't eat that. There you go. Well, why don't you eat blood? Mm, technically, you're not supposed to. And believe it or not, there are people who will actually drink it. I think that's absolutely crazy. But that could be a conversation for another day. I don't want to get too deep into all that. I think most people already have an idea of what goes on underground, so to speak. I don't think I have to really... dive deep into it there's a lot of good anons out there that do i try to ask questions that maybe most people don't think of or give an inspiration that people don't know they have within themselves for example i say you should be able to ask anybody any question at any time especially if it's something that is concerning to you be like oh yeah you're right I need to start asking questions. It's a simple thing. Some people forget the rights they have. That's okay, because in this country, we're supposed to have all of our rights, right? You're allowed to question. You're allowed to declare. You're allowed to bear arms. You're allowed to practice your religion. And anybody could be a journalist. If you see something, say something. Especially if you have the proof, actual proof, not doctored. All right, so I'm going to have, okay, do you want me to be like other podcasters or, or vl vloggers and just take a bite and just show you how good it is and like roll my eyes in the back of my head as I, mmm, like a dork? All right, here's my honest take on this steak. gonna be honest with you I think I overdid it with the salt however it is delicious it is a sirloin it's a typical there's not a lot of marbling in a sirloin steak actually is like little to none it's almost like eating venison I, you know what I should have prepared this like a venison steak to be honest that would have been pretty good yeah, I will do that for you. Let me see if I have some. And they're like, oh my god, where did you get venison? It's called Black Wing Meats. Look it up. Black Wing something. They sell everything from, they sell venison, elk, beef, pork, chicken. I said venison, elk, ostrich, buffalo. Yeah, it's like off the grid kind of food. I've done elk. I'm not, maybe there's a, there's a certain way to prepare elk. Elk brats are good if I don't, if it's not mixed with pork. I personally do not eat pork. However, there might be some dishes that I'll make for someone else. Like for example, I make my brown sugar buffalo bacon wrap chicken with pineapples. That is a hit everywhere I go and I'll tell you exactly well I'll just tell you now if you're really that curious okay so what you'll do is you'll take about two pounds of chicken cut them up into about one inch cubes 
all right? Throw it in a bowl. You can brine it if you want. Then throw it in the bowl and just kind of let it sit in itself. Two cups of packed brown sugar, two tablespoons, and this is the kind of chili powder that I use. I use, I mean, I love it. Dark chili powder. There is a tiny kick to it, but when you mix it with the brown sugar and the way it reacts to the, the bacon and the, and the pineapple, it's such a good flavor. This is, not one person told me that they didn't like it. All right, just saying. Now this is coming from somebody who doesn't eat bacon, but I'll eat a piece of chicken with pineapple on it. It's like, oh my God, the bacon just makes it. I'm like, well, maybe if there's beef bacon that I could get my hands on, maybe I'll do that. But I guess the pork bacon has like a crisp to it. So what you'll do then is here you have the two pounds of chicken in a bowl, right? One inch cubes. You want to keep them as even as possible. And you know, like the tail end of a chicken where it's um, kind of flat and it's not really an inch thick. So you're like, you're worried if it's going to burn. What I do with those is I'll fold it in half and then put a toothpick through it. So what you do is you'll get a can of sliced pineapples. I should have them. Sliced. I have sliced beets. Can't beat beets. Well, you would think I'd have it. Ooh, I got palm hearts. Yum. Okay, so here. I know it's weird, but the kind of sliced <laughs> pineapples that kind of like look like this cabbage. They're like little V's with a flat end on it. There you go. So anyways, you take that thing, right? So what you'll do is you'll cut the bacon in thirds. So one third, one third. So you get three pieces per piece of bacon. One pound of bacon should get you through two pounds of chicken. And as the bacon becomes room temperature, it stretches. So you let the chicken, you mix it in. You can just use your bare hands because it's just easier. Plus you're adding a little bit of your flavor even though your hands are clean. <laughs> Brown sugar and the uh, dark chili powder. I like McCormick with that particular seasoning. Not all seasonings are the same with every company, but I think McCormick makes a good one for that. Mix it up. And it'll seem dry at first, but between the, the juices and the reverse osmosis that that the chicken reacts between the sugar and the, come on, help me out here, and the chili powder, it'll become almost like a, um, like a glaze. And it, it covers the chicken evenly, all right? So then what you do is you take one perfectly glazed piece of chicken and you wrap it with the bacon, put a... Pour, a toothpick through it and then you put a pineapple at the end a little slice of pineapple and what you need is a gritted grill thing you know like the little thing that you find on the bottom of the oven here let me see if I have it I don't it's like a slitted pan right so what I do is I put foil over it so it's not a huge cleanup and then just cut with a fork or a knife the little slits where the little holes are in that pan lay the chicken on tightly and then I pour the juice from the pineapple into that pan so it kind of steams a little bit, the pineapple juice, because you don't want to pour the juice on top of the chicken because then you're going to wash off your glaze. Pop it in the oven, 350, depending on how big the plate is. Well, it's two pounds. So I do about 45 minutes to an hour. So I, I would do 45, depending on how hot your oven really is. If it's like five degrees warmer, you could probably do 35 minutes. Maybe that's... Excuse me. Excuse me. A little safer. And then if I have any extra of anything, I'm almost never extra in bacon. Sometimes I have a couple pieces of chicken that doesn't have the bacon. I'll just put a couple pineapples on it and put those on the separate side. And those will be the ones I'll eat. And then any extra pineapple, I'll just kind of like put it around and like kind of like mix it in there so that that pineapple is so good. So that's how I do it. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you try any of these and you like it or you don't like it, eh, shoot me a comment. Take care. Bye-bye.